Let's talk about scalar multiplication. Um, in my last tutorial, I covered what a scalar is, uh, something that has magnitude but no direction. And we have a vector here which has magnitude and direction. Uh, when we say scalar multiplication, we mean something like this, where we're multiplying a scalar s uh, by a vector a or with a vector a. And since the scalar has no direction, it gets multiplied to a in each direction, uh, in each of its um, axes sort of thing. So a s a in the y direction and in the z direction. It could be s a, it doesn't have to be a s. Um, anyways, and what we're actually multiplying in visual terms or mathematical terms, it's what we're actually doing is that we're scaling the magnitude of a. So for example, if s was 2, and we did a 2a, it would look something like this, where we take a and then we scale it twice. So it would be a big line like this. And uh, you, could, you could do it parts by parts, and it's better to do that way because uh, then you can visualize that, okay, we have a, the first a right here, and we add another a on top of it, uh, the tail of the second a onto the head of the first. And uh, so, it, for example, if the vector was this, it would become two. Anyways, um, one important point is that when you're doing scalar multiplication, multiplication, the direction of the vector will never change except for one case. And that's when you multiply it by a negative number. So for example, if this was a and we multiplied by, we want negative, our scalar is negative one. So negative one times a will flip the direction of a in each axis. So it would be something like, uh, in this case, if it was negative 2, it would become negative 2. Negative two. And you can visualize that um, right here, where it flips totally backwards in each direction. Like I said before, for example, when we have the Cartesian plane here, and we want, this is the z-axis, and something we multiply by negative 1, the z-axis will become the negative z-axis, so it will go that way, and that is flipping it right opposite, going backwards. Um, secondly, we have uh, when we multiply two um, vectors together. So for example, let's say we have a vector a and a vector b. It would look something like this, ax, bx, ay, by, and az, bz. And uh, this is called a Hadamard product. Hadamard product, and uh, this is a non-uniform multiplication, whereas the scalar one is uniform. And what that means is that in this case, uh, let's pick one of these vectors, a. Um, a is being multiplied. Uh, each axis of a is being multiplied by a different number. I mean, the vector b could be one, one, one. In which case, it, it it's uh, scalar multiplication, uh, not scalar, sorry, uh, uniform multiplication, but I mean, vectors could be anything, right? It could be one, two, and three. In this case, ax is mul being multiplied by one, uh, ay is being multiplied by two, and a3 is multiplied by three. Uh, so this is called non-uniform multiplication, where in, a sca in the scalar multiplication, it's always uniform. Uh, this guy right here is not really used in uh, game programming much, just because there's no need. Uh, I really don't have a better reason for that, except for I can say that there's other uh, vector multiplication methods uh, that are used, and I will be covering them in the next tutorial, and they are the cross product and dot, dot product. And uh, specifically, I wrote this symbol right here. This represents this kind of multiplication, which is the Hadamard product. Uh, the dot product is something like this, and I will also explain the cross product later on. Um, so let's move on to the next thing, which is addition and subtraction vectors. When we have vector addition, um, it's something like we have two vectors, a and b, and uh, I've drawn them here. Uh, let's just say this one is a and this one is b. And uh, you can visualize uh, that when you do vector addition, what it really means is that you're adding the components of a to the components of b. So what this would be is ax, the x component, plus the x component of b. Similarly, the rest. Um, and to draw that, we would take a, we always take one vector and add the other vector, the second vector we're adding uh, to the, we add the tail of the second vector to the head. So it would be something like this. 
a and b and a plus b is this vector right here so we get this guy um, for example if this was 1 1 1 and this was 1 2 3 this would be 2 3 4 and I guess showed you how to draw that um, a minus B subtraction subtraction is just like addition except for we take the negative counterpart of the B vector so we could also say something like a plus negative B and I showed you before what vector multiplication does when you multiply by negative one so you could just think of this as a scalar and the this would flip B in each direction, so B would just be this guy right here. So A, oops, sorry, that wasn't straight off. A plus negative B, or A minus B, is this guy right here. So we end up with this guy. So that's vector addition and subtraction. And uh, now I'll tell you about how you can add or subtract points from vectors or just points from each other. Alright, so there's some general rules of vector and point addition and subtraction and uh, most of them are you can add a direction and you can subtra subtract a direction from a direction to get another direction. You can add a point to a direction to get a point. You can subtract two points and you will get a direction. So you have a point A right here you have a point B right here. If you do A minus B, you can get a you can get a direction vector, something like this. Uh, one thing you can't do is that you can't add a point to a point. This makes no sense. Just think about it. You have your Earth right here, and you have a point somewhere here. Let's just say this is South America and let's just say uh, there's India right here if you add a point these two points what does that even mean nothing because none of these points have any um, direction uh, but then again like I said you can add a uh, you can subtract a point from a point uh, which makes a vector right here uh, that's all there is to these rules and um, so let's move on to what is the magnitude of a vector so the magnitude is a scalar representation of the length of the vector and it is a scalar value and uh, in mathematics it can be represented as two bars on each side of the vector and you can see right here it looks something like the Pythagorean theorem and this is how it's calculated um, what this actually means is that let's pick two values first I'll make this simpler for you um, let's pick two values first and we can individually find the Pythagorean theorem of this so we're picking these two axes right here and we can find the Pythagorean uh, this value right here this would be the length for example if we add remember we did um, adding vectors to each other so we add two vectors so the length the vector we get out of this is this guy and we can find this length by doing the Pythagorean theorem on these two so let's say we have the value we get out of this is something like um, a a1 and let's just let's just call az a2 so doing the Pythagorean theorem of that is um, fairly easy because that's I'm probably I'm sure that this is the form you've seen before so what this is doing is that since we've already got the Pythagorean value of X and Y axes it's just adding on to the Z axis so we get the full length the magnitude of the vector but in uh, game programming game programmers tend to calculate magnitude like this they square uh, the magnitude because getting square roots in uh, code, if you guys know, is very expensive. It costs a lot of memory, so uh, people like doing it like this. We have an example here where we have two um, unequally sized spheres, and let's say we want to find out whether they intersect or not, and assume 
the only quantities we're given are the radius of these spheres, r, and uh, the center the center points of these spheres. Now, one way of finding these uh, it, whether these two uh, spheres intersect or not is to subtract these two points a1 minus a2 to get d, uh, this vector right here, uh, which is the distance. Well, it's not the distance, it's the vector that forms uh, between a1 and a2. And, the, and like I said before, the magnitude is the distance. So we can find the distance between these two points by taking the magnitude of d, which is just d, this guy right here, right? And uh, how we can tell if these two spheres intersect or not is that if d equals um, sorry, let me write that again. If d, the magnitude of d equals uh, or is less than a, uh, the radius of a2 plus the radius of a1, right? So if this guy right here plus this guy right here is greater than, if it's greater than or equal to the magnitude of this vector, uh, then the two spheres intersect. And it's as simple as that. And all we used is just basic algebraic skills that we learned in just two videos. So uh, please uh, try and comment, tell me how I'm doing so far because this is only my second video. Thank you for watching.